Welcome to Tin Talks, real conversations with champions for champions. I'm your host, Emily Love. And I'm Carlette Patterson, your head sports life coach. And the desired outcome of our Real Conversations for Champions with Champions is to share our passion for sports life coaching. We want to get you coached and our purpose for training you for a life that you love is we want to connect you to what matters to you in your life and the power of being a champion in your own life. A champion life is a 10 life. Coach Wooden defines competitive greatness as being your best when your best is needed. We just saw a recent display of this as Tiger Woods, a famous professional golfer, won his fifth Masters after an 11-year major drought. The game of golf already requires laser focus on the smallest of details, and now pair that with one of the largest audiences and the most elite talent group, and you have yourself the exact moment of needing to be your best in every facet. The level of commitment, discipline, and inner self-confidence Woods had to stay committed to the process year after year with no major victory highlights how competitive greatness may not look exactly as we plan, but it will never return void in our lives. This week on 10 Talks, our desired outcome is to talk about the power of coaching for competitive greatness. Here to join us for our conversation is someone that I consider a top five influencer in my life, Charlie Turner Thorne. My head basketball coach at Arizona State University and the one solely responsible for introducing me to sports life coaching in Carlette. Charlie Turner Thorne started her career in athletics as a basketball player for Stanford. She coached for Washington, Santa Clara, and Northern Arizona until taking the head coaching job at Arizona State in 1996. She has amassed several school records, including most wins in a season, a conference championship, most NCAA bursts, and she is one of three Pac-12 coaches that have led their team to five or more consecutive 21 seasons. She has also coached with the USA Basketball Program. While she was on staff, they brought home the gold medal for their country both in 2007 and 2009. CTT, it is quite a treat having you with us today. I'm going to start off and tell you guys thank you for being amazing and being on my support team and really being someone that's given me hope and the epitome of the word coach. And when I think about you two and what you guys have done for me and how, you know, Charlie, you were my college coach and you helped me grow into, you know, a young woman and ready to be married and have kids and step into my life and then introduced me to, to Carlette at that same time, you know, cared enough about me and was willing to invest in all of us and all of your girls and had Carlette come. You guys are still giving me hope. I think that is just such a cool picture, again, of the word coach where you really stick with someone through their life. That's not every definition um, of coach to people, but you guys have done that for me and you've, you know, really pushed me even into this, um, career. Both of you encouraged me to do it. So I just want to say thank you for loving me and coaching me and really having my back. Um, it's quite an amazing thing that not everybody gets the opportunity to experience. So first I just want to start off with the thank you. I'm as grateful for you, Emily. Okay. So we, we can talk about that during this podcast. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Yeah, and just the power of team. I think that's a beautiful definition of the three of us coming together. Individually, we were doing what we all love to do. Charlie, you're coaching basketball. I was sports life coaching in the pro market. And Emily was getting to live her dream of being able to play D1 basketball. And, and you know, on our own, we were all doing fine. And then when we had that moment to really come together and ignite the power of team, you know, I'm just incredibly grateful that we all we all did it. I mean, I know, Charlie, when I think back and really watch the film of you and I getting together, both of us were like, I don't know about this. You know, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know. I wasn't sure if sports life coaching would work in the college market because I had only been working with guys in, in professional sports. And, and you know, you said, well, if it's good enough for guys in pro sports, mm. why aren't my girls getting it? I and I that. was like, you know, okay, let's do this. But I remember saying to you, I don't know if this is going to work, you know, let's try it. And I just want to thank you, Charlie, for number one, always, as you always do, looking out for just creating great people and, and also giving somebody like me an opportunity to do what I love and be passionate about and join your incredible team. So thank you for the power of team. No, 
Thank you, Carlette. I mean, that was one of the best decisions I ever made as a coach. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, well, we're recruiting Emily and, and you know, um, many of my amazing women, but you no, know, I, I was, I was, you know, a little cautious, you know, didn't, didn't know you, you know, kind of like, okay, well, this sounds really good, but you know, I was always, um, I mean, we didn't bring a lot of people in, did we, Emily? I no. mean, there was, you know, was it, you knew that person was special if I brought them into our bubble because, you know, I just, um, you know, I, I, I really, um, needed to trust, you know, and, and believe that this, you know, anybody that we brought in was gonna, when it was gonna add incredible value. And I mean, gosh, you know, yeah, it was kind of a pilot year and then, we haven't looked back and it's, it's just been, I mean, more impactful really than I can, I can probably verbalize with, with, with me, you know, with, but, you know, especially, you know, for our players. Mm -hmm. Charlie, let's talk a little bit about your bio because it's just fun and impressive. I mean, not only can I be so proud. Oh, of the let's that not. We, I let's know. Just, <laughs> let's to. just talk about stuff. No, no <laughs> yeah. we have to because I think I've you're, coached a long time. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Your bio, Charlie, is what speaks to competitive greatness, which is what our tool is today. And so we can't skip over the way that you have you know, run headfirst out after competitive greatness, not only for yourself and your career, but I mean, that has touched every single kid, woman, you know, that you've grown into a woman over all of these years. So just touch on your bio and, you know, some of the highlights that you feel like kind of embody your spirit of competitive greatness. Well, this one does, you know, I mean, you know, who you've become, how you continue to lead and impact your community. I mean, um, that, I mean, that's, that's your competitive greatness, but gosh, you know, if that's, you know, that's my why, right. To mm -hmm. hopefully, you know, inspire amazing young women like you, Emily, you know, to go on and be, you know, leaders in their community and, and continue to impact people. Um, given birth, that was a, that was a, <laughs> yes. especially during the season, you know, that Amen. I felt like, you know, that we were all moms. We, we know yeah. that that's no joke. <laughs> Yeah, I will never forget. You walked down the tunnel after like two days, maybe not even two days, Charlie. I think it was a day. And you were walking very gingerly, but there you showed up to basketball practice yeah, there. after yeah. you had a newborn. I mean, talk about, talk about, you know, a woman who can do it all. And, and Carlette says, you know, we can do it all, not at the same time. But Charlie, that you are a champion for women who in a movement where people are like, you can't have it all. You can be a mom, but you can't work. I just had someone tell me this week, why do you have a job? You have so much going on. You don't need to be working. And it's like, hold on. Why are we telling other, it was a woman telling me that. Why are we telling each other that yeah. you modeled what it looked like to have a family and love them with all of your heart and soul and be dedicated to them, but also be dedicated to, you know, a sport. I mean, talk about that. That's huge. Yeah. Thanks, Emily. I mean, I think, I think so much in life, people do put limitations on themselves and, you know, there's absolutely, I mean, you know, parenting is a full-time job and, you know, no, no, um, you know, obviously disrespect or anything to anybody that just makes it that, you know, but at, at the same time, um, yeah, when my kids say, you know, you, you spend more time with the sisters than you do with us. I was, you know, my response was kind of simple, you know, God put me here, you know, for more than just to raise you guys. And, you know, I, I do feel like the balance was, was good for me. I, I, you know, you miss out on stuff. I mean, there's no perfect, mm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, there's oftentimes there's not enough hours in the day, right. Mm -hmm. For, for, for things that we want to do and, and, you know, beyond our family and, um, certainly in, in our career, <laughs> <laughs> Whew. um, you know, you, you kind of run out of hours, but I, you know, I don't think I would change anything. You know, maybe a few things, but but not a whole lot, you know, in terms of, you know, my incredible opportunity to work with all the amazing women that I have. And, you know, I think as a parent, as long as you know your kids are doing well, mm -hmm. you know, they're healthy, they're they're thriving, they're in a good place, um, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, then, you know, you 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 miss out on some things. But, um, yeah, I, I you know, I I think um you know, I mean, cause some people say, Oh, you know, well, you know, you, you have such great balance. You know, that's, that's not true. I mean, sometimes life is just imbalanced and you do the best you can and you prioritize the best you can and you give as much as you can to the people that, you know, need it. And, and that's, you know, that's all I've tried to do. And it's definitely not, you know, 
perfect. And there's times I know that I wish I could have been there a little bit more for the boys. And there's times that I know, you know, I should have, you know, maybe been there for a player, you know, when I, when I wasn't. So, I mean, but that's life, you know, and you just learn and grow and, and try to get better. Mm-hmm. Charlie, I want to talk about our tool, Competitive Greatness. It's fun because this season you and I are doing this as well with the team. And so just introducing to our team what it means for Competitive Greatness is we define Competitive Greatness with the tools of truth, faith, and love. And you've just been speaking into the truth of life that in all three dimensions, personally, professionally, and philanthropically, we can only do so much. And just to go out there with that spirit of I'm being the best person that I can. I'm going for it. And so share just a bit about your truth in terms of as you prepare to be competitively great as a coach, what are some of the winning strategies that you have as well as performance barriers for the truth of what it takes to be great as a coach? Um, well, you know, I think, I think it starts, we, we always teach our players, you know, self-care, right? And I think, you know, anybody that's really trying to serve Um, people, you know, especially a a little bit beyond your family, you know, you really have to lead yourself first. And so, you know, I mean, just making good decisions with your personal life, with your, you know, taking care of yourself. I do, I do think that's really important. So um, I want to share that with everybody that's listening, because I think, you know, if I'm not getting my rest, if I'm eating poorly, if I'm not getting up and getting my workout in, I, I, I don't feel like I'm, I'm my, I'm a 10. (laughs) I'm not not a 10. I'm not the best me. So Mm -hmm. I really, I mean, you know, sometimes that doesn't work out, especially if we lose a game. (laughs) (laughs) I don't eat, I don't sleep, you know, but but I try, I try to, and I know it's important. So, you know, that's, you know, a huge truth in terms of, you know, showing up a 10 every day. And, and then, you know, I think I try to model what I ask of my players, you know, just Mm -hmm. in terms of preparation and, 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 you know, being resilient and, you know, coaches have performance barriers, players have performance barriers, you know, we can get in our own way. If, if, you know, if we don't have the right mindset, um, you know, we talk a lot about mindset and I think we all fall into that, you know, fixed mindset sometimes where we're just, you know, especially in athletics, you know, you know, got, got to get the win, you know, got, got, got to be ready to perform, you know, great, you know, and, and uh, I mean, you know, that's how I get evaluated. <laughs> um, that's not necessarily how I completely evaluate myself and, uh, but, you know, when you're just focusing on results, which I think is easy in athletics, I think, you know, you that's a huge performance barrier. And so, you know, we talk about a growth mindset, of course, and just really, you know, getting better and having fun. And this is a fun challenge. And oh, my gosh, you know, we graduated an amazing senior class. What are we going to do? <laughs> okay, fun <laughs> challenge. You know, and, uh, you know, these people are still getting healthy. Fun challenge. And um, so I, I think, um, you know, um, as a coach, just kind of like with your players, you know, it's, it's your making sure, you know, you're, pre- you're preparing and your mind is right and you're taking great care of yourself and, and, you know, certainly just continuing to serve, you know, um, having, uh, you know, just loving, you know, loving the people around you, um, obviously, you know, not judging, but just meeting them where they're at. Um, a lot of people have a lot of things to say about this generation, you know, and, and Carla and I, we have our conversations, you know, <laughs> but, you know, you know, we always at the end of the day, you know, see the, the greatness in them, you know, and, and see their strengths and meet them where they're at, you know, and, and just try to love them and support them to be the best that they can be. And I think, you know, that's the essence of what all three of us are trying to do, you know, in our lives every day. That takes us right to faith from a component of truth, faith, and love. And Charlie, you just demonstrate faith in such a 10 way. And I want to talk about a little bit about our journey with you and Emily and myself and, and how there you have to have faith in yourself and what you really love. And I go back to all of us loving what we were doing. And then when we want to actually ignite the power of team or really go to that next level without it being a team effort and without each one of us having faith in each other to really give this a try, we don't even have that opportunity. And so when I think about our faith tool, 
it's about you having faith in me that we could try this. And what an honor to be able to bring sports life coaching into a team to have a, a coach. Trust me, Charlie and I are starting our 15th year. So we've been practicing this. Woo! I know a little <laughs> celebration there quite a bit. And, um, and so from a faith perspective, I also want to just talk about Charlie, you having the faith in yourself as a coach to take this leap of faith and, and bring sports life coaching into your organization. Again, you paid for it. It's you that really wanted this for your girls. It's what our amazing boosters and the opportunity that we have with boosters to really let you specialize in how you can serve and support your, your girls to become young women. And all of us really anchoring in having faith, you having faith in me, me having faith in you and our, and our ability to communicate constantly on how to get better, how this is working. And then Emily, as an athlete, be having faith that her coaches are for her and are really bringing in some new things. But, you know, how can we dive into being practicing faith and achieve something better than we could ever imagine? I always, when I'm recruiting Young ladies always just say, you know, I talk about Carlette. You know, I talk about we have a life coach. I talk about we're going to care about you as a woman first and a basketball player second. And that we, mm. you know, we really truly believe that if you're in a good place as a person, then basketball is going to take care of itself. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I mean, Emily, you probably speak to that better than anybody, but don't, wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree with that? Absolutely. And even just more of the studies come out, you know, Carlette and I were actually at a coaches conference and they were talking about like, what are the performance barriers essentially get that get in the way of teams achieving their best level. And it's not skill-based performance stuff. It is, you know, drama, gossip, distrust. It's like all these things that we actually grow as people inside of us uh -huh. and our character and our integrity. <laughs> and so when, when you hear that, you think that's exactly right. But you did, Charlie, you had the faith to not only invest in sports life coaching, but also take time away from what could potentially have been sports practice to allow us to work on ourselves. And I think that is huge. I think that's what coaches need to hear. And that's what players need to hear, you know, that I can actually not spend 15 minutes on the court and I can spend 15 minutes with my life coach and be better on the court because of it. And that is a huge transformational mind shift that I think some of us have to take. I mean, I can think back to my senior year and it was the most beautiful and the toughest year maybe of my whole life. You know, we right, had um, right. a horrible loss, you know, to my best friend's family. And then we also are in the middle of this, like, it's my last year as a college athlete. So this balance between um, seeing death and being brokenhearted over it and trying to love my sister, you know, who was also my teammate through this, I mean, heartbreaking time that you you really don't ever get over in your life. You spend your life, you know, really healing from this horrible moment. And then, in, you know, enter Carlette into the situation. And I think you giving me time to see her every week, Charlie, made the difference for me. So when I knew that I could save my tears and save my grief for my 30 minute window with Carlette, then I was more present on the court. And not only did it minister to my heart, but I think it, it taught me so much more. It taught me about competitive greatness and it taught me, you know, she really, Carlette really was able to, um, just nurture my spirit. And it came from your willingness to let me spend time with her in that regard. So, um, you know, and then because of it, we had the most successful season in school's history. And I don't think that's a coincidence. You know, I think especially in these moments of life where we're stewarding something horrible, it makes those challenges that, you know, even in life, like the showing up to practice and the, gr the gruesome battle of being a college athlete. People often skip that over, but it is physically demanding. It is emotionally demanding. And it was funny because death made me enter into that with more joy and more competitive greatness. But I don't think if I would have had a life coach and if I would have had you, Charlie, as a coach, I don't think I would have gotten that same result. Well, Thank you, Emily. And I'm really glad you brought that up. I mean, that was definitely one of my, that's one of my top moments of competitive greatness was just that season mm -hmm. because we truly did experience, like I've never gone before then. And since then I haven't gone through a greater tragedy, you know, during the year. And then for us to, you know, really, you know, in large part because of you, Carlette, and because of Emily, you and the amazing you know, young women that, that, you know, work through it, you know, and, and allowed yourselves to be coached and, and, uh, 
you know, grow from, from that tragedy. I mean, yeah, we went on to go to the elite eight, you know, the, the best season ever when, you know, we, you know, I, I reference that season all the time um, in the sense of, because, you know, one of the things that life coaching does is help, you know, in talking about 10 moments and stuff like that, it just teaches us to be more present, mm -hmm. you know, which, which is of course is, you know, the million dollar, <laughs> we could all just do that better, right? We would, yes. we would always yeah. be happy and, yeah. and, and great. And, mm -hmm. you know, in that year, you know, I can't even tell you, um, Emily and Carla, how many times I've referenced that year is just because nobody cared about themselves anymore. That's right. Mm -hmm. we, we played for a greater, we truly, yeah. truly played for a greater good. Oh, you talk about that every year as a coach, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, the selflessness and, and, you know, but all the performance barriers, they just, they just, you know, melted away mm -hmm. because it, you know, it was just us coming together um, for one, you know, one purpose, Jordan, you know, and, 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 uh, it was, yeah, it was the hardest and most amazing season still of my, my coaching career. Mm -hmm. And just listening to it, I mean, I know all three of us have goosebumps and tears and, you know, our hearts are full and it was a moment in time that, we forget that this this game of life that we're playing is so valuable, so frail, so fragile, so powerful, so many things. And and this, you know, us all being together and really remembering what life is about and being for each other really had produces a result that's so much bigger than than kind of just that climb or think that we can we can do it ourselves and that brings us to our third fundamental for competitive greatness we've talked about truth we've got faith now it's all about love and you can just hear that in our voices and our hearts and our story of how that moment of competitive greatness we found love for each other in a way that we'd never even seen coming and, and that love of the game and the love of life and the love for each other. And, and Charlie, I think a lot of times as, you know, you've been coaching a long time, I've been sports life coaching a really long time. That passion is, is what gets us up every day. And people can say, how do you keep doing this? How do you, you know, really go through the grind of it? And, and for me, it's because I'm anchored in love and I know the same is true for you, Charlie. And so just talk about how love really helps you be the coach that you want to be every day. Um, yeah, uh, I agree a hundred percent, of course. <laughs> and, um, yeah, you know, one thing that we, you know, probably say at least once a week, if not every couple of weeks within our program is that every, relationships are everything, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, like, and if, when you, I always get, you know, people to think about, like, think about it, you know, you win some, you lose some, you, you know, so stuff happens in life, but you know, you're, you know, usually you can manage fine. But when you're when you have a relationship that is sideways, mm -hmm. usually you are sideways. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing that really um, hurts our heart, you know, or, 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 or really, you know, we, we feel to our core. Right. That that we don't have a relationship. Right. And so, um, yeah, I mean, the loving my players, my staff, you know, all, all our fans, the community, the people that are around us, just getting to have these relationships, um, working on them, you know, to have the positive, healthy relationships that, that feed us and fuel us every day is, is truly, you know, why I'm still doing it. You know, mm -hmm. it's definitely not for the wins. <laughs> <laughs> well, know, you have no control over that, right? We I mean, don't. Yeah, yeah absolutely. This brings us and, back controlling what we can and that's relationships. Yeah, exactly. And this is the, you know, the brilliance of sports life coaching. I mean, there's no multi-million dollar contract for these women, you know, in, in college women's mm -hmm. basketball and, and in a lot of these sports and it's getting to be a part of growing them, you know, to love themselves you know, but then also just have these great relationships where, you know, they're centered in love and they, you know, they aren't judging. And, um, you know, you know, I love the book of joy. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Emily, if you know it, but Carlette knows it. It's mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. it spoke to me on so many levels that, you know, the root of all fear, doubt, negative thinking, you know, is, is self-centered thinking, mm -hmm. you know, and if we can just get outside ourselves, which I think is every athlete's and probably coaches <laughs> biggest performance barrier, <laughs> You know, and just, mm -hmm. you know, be about the people around us and, and love them, you know, pretty much unconditionally, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. As best we can as humans, right? As I mean, best we can as humans. Yeah. Charlie, you know, I mean, is, I think you, you totally negated my um, question about your bio, but I think the irony in all of this is that you say, you know, it's not about the wins, but because you, 
have chosen to value relationships, you have a phenomenal record. You have, I mean, so many titles and, um, you know, banners and victories under your belt. And so, yes, you don't want to talk about them, but I'll talk about them for you. I don't think that there's, you know, um, it's not by chance that the, the, the correlation between your winning record, Charlie, and the things that you've done for your university are because you've chosen relationships first. And I can say wholeheartedly, I don't think it would have been easy to give my heart away on the court my senior year, dealing with the tragedy and the sorrow and so sad if I didn't know that you cared about me as a person before you cared about me as a basketball player. It would have been really easy to check out on you and just say, you know what, I'm done. I can't do this. This is life. This life over here is more important. But because you cared about me, I wanted to give you every single thing I had every day at practice and in the game. And I think that's because of the way that you authentically loved me. And I think that is what coaches and, and uh, I mean, parents and friends need to hear that we might say one thing, but our actions will really show the people in our life what matters. And so I can say, Hey, I love you. You're my top priority and relationship matters most, but our kids and our friends and our coworkers are going to be able to see what really is most important. And Charlie, you cared about me as a person. And I wanted to, I mean, I wanted to die on the court for you. And so I think that is, um, the byproduct of someone who authentically believes that. So thank you for just that and that gift that you gave us and that you continue to give to your, to your girls. I mean, it's a gift that I don't take lightly because it's not found often in life. Well, thanks, Emily, you know, and, and, you know, probably like full transparency, you know, I believed in culture. I believed in character. I believed that that would help us win, Mm -hmm. you know, as a young coach. And then as an older coach, I believe in it as the right thing to do also. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, I think I believed it was the right thing to do when I was a young coach too, but I just believe like, this is, this is team sports. This is how we win, you know? Um, And, you know, so these things are important, but then as every year it's like, well, these things are important because these things are important. Mm -hmm. And that's what I feel like, you know, sports life coaching and just the understanding of everything we're talking about, unfortunately, is what some coaches, when they don't get it, you know, sometimes they aren't successful. You know, they they they, they don't win. You know, they lose their jobs and they're they're um um and I just see and it's unfortunately there isn't a lot of training. Mm-hmm. So you know, there coaches, there's a lot of basketball coaches that, you know, really need more training in this area. And then I would be remiss if I didn't say, you know what, there's some very successful basketball coaches that are very transactional. You know, they go out and they recruit by whatever means necessary. I'll just leave it at that. Mm-hmm. And they get top players and they bring them in and they promise them a lot of stuff and they win a lot of games. And, and that's that I would, you know, retire. <laughs> I, I just, yeah. I <laughs> it's mean, not you, right? You wouldn't not be, me. you yeah, wouldn't be wouldn't being true be, to you, Charlie. It wouldn't be, I wouldn't love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't be my truth. I wouldn't believe in it. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't love it, you know, to just be, you know, and, and I, 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 you know, I know as a coach, you know, just uh, probably on my back nine, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't, you know, if I start to shift it all to that transactional, okay, well, you know, come in, okay, I got to you know, do this, let's do this, you know, and okay, I, you know, I will walk away mm-hmm. because that's, I don't think I could, I don't think I am that way. Like, Emily, you could never be that way, Carla, you could never be that way. I'd like to think I could never mm-hmm. be that way, mm-hmm. but, you know, I will say there's programs that have success with it, you know, very businesslike and stuff. And, and uh, what I find when we talk to, you know, families and, and young women um, that are, are very much in the mold of, of you, Emily, you know, they, that they, when they get it, you know, then we have a great shot of having them as part of our family mm-hmm. because, you know, they, they do realize, yeah, you know, I want somebody to care about me mm-hmm. because, you know, I talked about mindset as, as a huge performance barrier, but anxiety, you know, yes. we have a kind of an epidemic with anxiety yes. and depression in our, in our in our country right now, and it's it's very very real. Mm-hmm. And I I do feel like a lot of families and young women coming up, you know, are more in tune with the disconnects and and the things that they're having to deal with. And so, I feel like we're speaking to them more than ever, mm-hmm. which which is good, you know, which is good in terms of yeah, this is, you know, basketball's me basketball, but you know you. 
you know, we're going to really, you know, help you um, comprehensively and holistically, hopefully have an amazing experience and, and, you know, grow as a leader and, and uh, have fun. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> yeah <you laughs> know, Another and, winning strategy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, and, and figuring out what you want to do because you're not going to get rich, you know, as a pro in women's basketball, mm-hmm. it's just mm-hmm. not, you know, probably going to happen. And, and uh, yeah. So um, well, Charlie, you, you've brought up some amazing components for competitive greatness. And I want to just anchor our audience and, you know, team into the fact that you hear Charlie talk about competitive greatness from her heart and just living it to give it and, and relationships, relationships, relationships. And, and actually the truth is if, you know, Charlie, if you aren't winning, you don't have a job. So we want to be really very real about the fact <laughs> that, you know, results true, produce. True that. That's, <laughs> yeah, true. that's the truth, right? <laughs> and we all have faith that what you just shared in terms of relationships, 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 and being different and playing with heart and that it does produce a result that our, you know, who we're getting paid for values. And so I want to make sure as we finish strong here that people really get the opportunity to hear that competitive greatness does produce great results and going about it from a, from being true to yourself and really having faith in the people that you surround yourself with to anchor in love and, and really go for that, those wins and go for however you define success. But Charlie, thank you for really demonstrating that competitive greatness for coaches has you just making choices every day. And then I love you speaking into the competitive greatness. Our athletes and our families want their athletes to to experience competitive greatness. But anxiety is a huge performance barrier right now. It is. And and you know, being truthful about the well being of an athlete is your one of your top priorities and us teaming up to really honor Mm -hmm. and train them in their life as intentionally as you're training them in sport is is really producing competitive greatness in a whole different level go Uh, us yes exactly that's what we like to say i'm like go us us. (laughs) charlie thank you so much for spending some time with us on 10 talks thank you for being my coach forever i love you and i just am so grateful for the the millions of ways you really have spoken into my life and carlette I just, man, I'm so thankful that she introduced us 15 years ago and that you're changing my life. Um, Carlette, thank you for this awesome workout. Okay, team. So Charlie has been talking to us about competitive greatness, and it's time to go out and practice, practice, practice. Remember to anchor in our fundamentals for competitive greatness, which is truth, faith, and love. And as Charlie said it perfectly, it's about relationships, relationships, relationships. So go out and make it a 10-week practice, 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 nothing but 10s. Thank you for listening. Don't forget, tune in next week and head over to iTunes and Spotify and hit subscribe. Remember, a championship life is a 10 life. You matter. Your life matters. Create a life that you love. Give hope to others and be and choose nothing but 10s. Be you. The world needs you. Go to lifetrainingacademy.com.